Hello everyone, I'm Dea and welcome back to the reader side or welcome if you are new here. So today, I am here to wrap up my January reads. And since I already have a weekly wrap up where I talk about all the books that I have read, I will not go into great details with these books because it will be redundant. So what I will do instead is I will share my stats with you and I will rank all the 19 books that I have read for January starting from my most disappointing read until we reach my top 1 book for this month. If you want to know more about these books, I will link my weekly wrap up so you can check it out. So for the month of January, I have read 19 books. Nine of those are romance, five graphic novels, two young adult fiction, one literary fiction, one written in verse, and one science fiction. Within those nine romances, three of those are contemporary adult romance, four of those are young adult romance, then one historical romance, and one paranormal romance. Then I had read a total of 4,552 pages, which means that I had read 146 pages per day. And since I basically read 45 pages per hour, that means that in the month of January, I managed to read 3 hours per day for every single day, which I am proud to do. I feel like this phase is doable for me. I mean, I can increase my page count if I really want to, but at the same time, I am content with this number. So now for the ranking. My least favorite book of January is sadly Tessa Dare's historical romance, A Lady of Persuasion. This is her final book in her old series that I forgot the series name, but anyway, I gave this book one star. The romance sucks in here and I feel like you can skip this book and you won't miss anything. And I really, really did not like the hero in here. For the 18th place, we have Turtles All the Way Down by John Green, which is a young adult novel that I gave 3.5 stars. I really, really like the mental health representation in here, but sadly, this was just an okay read for me. Next, we have The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chibosky, which is another 3.5 stars. This one was just plain boring, but I did like how realistic it was. Trigger warning though for pedophilia. I really do like the story of The Perks of Being a Wallflower, but the first half of it was really a drag to read and I read for enjoyment, so I only rated this 3.5 stars. Then next, we have When Dimple Meet Rishi by Sanya Minon and I gave this one 3.5 stars as well. I didn't like the characters but I appreciate the diversity and family dynamics in here and I also like that our heroine is in STEM. Next, I have a paranormal romance, Dark Desire After Dust by Chris Lee Cole, which I also gave 3.5 stars. This is Cadion's romance and the first half was so good, but I was so disappointed with the last half of this book because of how things turned out. Next is an adult contemporary romance, Accidental Beauty Queen by Terry Wilson, which I also gave 3.5 stars. I love the sister relationship in here, but the romance was just okay. Then we have The Sounds of Stars by Alicia Doe, which is a young adult romance with science fiction elements. I have no idea how to categorize this one, so I'm sorry for that. Anyway, I gave this one 4 stars. I love the road trip romance in here, plus I really appreciate the mental health representation. Then, we have The Bride Test by Helen Wang, which I gave 4 stars. I love Esme's character arc, but the romance was not as on point as the Kiss Quotient, but it was still great. I just feel like that it lacks the oomph factor that I was looking for and 
we have that in the peace quotient. So another four star is Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is book two in her Murder Bot series. This is a science fiction novella about Murder Bot who hates its job. This was so hilarious and a quick read. Then I have Saga Volume 1, which is a graphic novel about this goat man who fell in love with this dragonfly lady and they are from the opposing war. So now their government is chasing them because the government wanted to kill their baby. This is such an entertaining graphic novel and Saga Volume 2 just made things more amazing in my opinion, especially since we also get to see the POV of their enemies and we get to understand their motivation for hunting them down. Then, on 7th place is Heartstopper Volume 1 by Alice Osman. This is a young adult male male romance and it was so cute. When I read this, I feel like I am hugging a cloud and it's just a comforting book to read and I can see myself rereading this one in the near future. For the sixth place, I have Eliza and Her Monsters by Francisca Zapia, which is about Eliza who is a comic creator and she meets a guy who writes fun fiction about her comic and they fell in love. This is such a wholesome read and I gave this one 4.5 stars. For fifth place, I have Heartstopper Volume 2, which I gave 4.5 stars. In here, we are focusing on gender and sexual identity, and I just fell in love with Charlie and Nick even more in here. For fourth place, I have Heartstopper Volume 3, which I gave 5 stars to. This series is just god tier in my opinion, and I want to read Volume 4 so badly, but at the same time, I am saving it for rainy days because I know that it will be a great read. For third place, I have The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas and I gave this book 5 stars. This is a slow-born, hate-to-love, fake dating romance and it was so good. Then, for the second place, I have Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which is a novel written in verse, and I gave this book 6 stars. And yes, I included 6 star ratings in computing my average star rating. So this book is about Will, who saw his brother died due to gun violence, and now he wanted to avenge his brother. This is a very emotional and powerful read and I still can't believe that this story happened in 60 seconds. The concept is so smart and I can't even comprehend how amazing it is. Then, the first place goes to And Every Morning The Way Home Gets Longer and Longer by Friedrich Bachmann, which is another 6-star read. And this is about a grandfather who has dementia and he is talking with his grandson about life and death and it was so painful but I can't stop reading it because of how beautiful the prose is. This book is just so precious and I hope that more people would read it. So overall, my star rating for this month is 4.07 and yes, I included my 6 star rating in computing this average. In my opinion, it's really a great reading month because I have two six stars. So there you have it. That's all the book that I had read in January. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye!